Okay, welcome back to another episode of Bailiwick Fishing. Sarah's back with me today. So we're off actually down to a cliff mark and uh, we're gonna put some bottom rods out. We've got a float rod today. Unfortunately, I've forgotten float stops, so we're gonna be uh, trying to... DIY it up. Exactly. Sarah's got the tripod. We've got some mackerel in here, which we caught in a previous video. Oh, it's lovely out there. It is lovely. Um, I've got two bottom rods, got a bit of ragworm to use up. It's a stunning day. Northeasterly winds, so hopefully down here is going to be shouted. And we've got small tides, 6.8 meters. We are on the south coast cliffs of Guernsey. So for any of you looking at a map, it's the only side of Guernsey with cliffs. Stunning views. This is the area called La Gouffe. And just look at that. Absolutely amazing. Amazing views. We thought it'd be a good one and we're literally just walking down Coastal Pass. Now I've got a Bailiwick fishing hoodie on. I can see that's going to be coming off. I've got a new hat as well, born to fish, forced to work. That's very accurate. I'm going to continue walking down. So as we're walking down, I'll tell you a little bit about this mark. It's called La Guff Harbour. Although there's not actually a harbour here, um, a small number of fishermen use this um, use this uh, little harbour or bay, basically. Um, it's, it's one of those where um, it's all little boats and you don't really get any big boats, so it's all little open boats. Um, we might see some down there, I don't know if they've been brought up yet, because obviously in the winter months, when it's stormy weather, it's quite a uh, targeted spot, so yeah, you need to get your boats out. We're nearly there though, it's only a short walk, and uh, we'll give you a show when we get down there. So this wall here is the uh, La Gouffe. We're going to look over the top and I'll show you where we're about to walk down. You can't quite see it. So we're going to go down the cliff path here, just down where the rod tip is. Basically, we're going to be fishing down there. Look at those cliffs. They're amazing. Northeasterly wind again, so they always say, what do they say when the wind's? From the east, the fish bite the least. Or in your case, when Sarah's with you, the fish bite the least. <laughs> Sarah thinks she's a bit of a jinx when it comes to fishing, because every time she comes on the boat, we don't seem to do quite as well, but hopefully today we might put a change to that. If you're looking at coming on holiday to Guernsey and you're looking for fishing spots, if you uh, put La Guff into your uh, sat nav and uh, you watch this video, this will be a uh, good tutorial of where to come and to fish from. Again, 6.8 meter tide, Guernsey can go up to 10.2, so it will be very low on the high water today. That water down there is absolutely crystal clear. You see there's little caves everywhere. It's a very popular spot for kayakers as well. You can get in some quite shallow water and have a good look around. Oh. Someone's swimming down there. Yeah, lovely water. But there's some of the dinghies there. I'll give you a show of those when we get down there. We're gonna be going off those rocks just in front of me, just down there. Nice, eh? Whew. Okay, we're down. So we've just climbed up from, down. well, down from there, where that gentleman is. We've walked all the way down, come down these massive rocks. Bit of a uh, game, but hey-ho, we're here. So we're gonna fish off here. Now it gets deep quick here. So you've got rough ground all the way in and then it goes on to sand. So we're gonna bang out a bottom rod out there and we're gonna try with a float just around here, hopefully. See if there's any garfish. Okay. So the tripod's now set up like that. The first bottom rod, I'm gonna be using a Paternoster rig. So main line down to um, a Paternoster rig, size 1.0 long shank hooks down to a four ounce weight. The rod I'm using today is a Pen Squadron. As always, you know me, it's always Pen. Pen Squadron 2 bass rod, Pen Pursuit 6,000 spool reel, fixed spool, and 20 pound mono line. So I'll give you a show. I'm going to bait up with the ragworm, you come in for a bit closer. 
this ragworm I had yesterday, so uh, give you a show of it. There's some nice worms, they're getting slightly tired, so we're gonna make use of them today. And all you wanna do with ragworm is make sure that you find the top of them where their fangs are. Now when they're really lively, they put their fangs out, they're a bit, um, a bit past at these, but what you do is wait for them to put their fangs out and as they swallow, they, they put their fangs back in, you put the hook shank down through the barb and just feed it through just like that. Now there's one, I'm gonna put another one. Now the target today down here, you can pretty much get anything. Daylight hours, ragworm, we all know what we're gonna be attracting. Balan Ras, so uh, yeah, hopefully we can bring you some fish. And that is the second one. So now I'm gonna cast out. I'm sure you all know how to cast, but if you don't, I'll show you. Bring your line up until your main line here is where your finger is. If you can't see this, um, you come in for a little bit of a closer look. If you've never cast before, you bring your line, you flick the bail arm up, and then as you cast, you let go of your finger. So we're gonna give it, oh, I nearly fell off the rocks. There's some kayakers out there as well. I'm gonna step down here, I'm gonna step out. We're gonna go right into the middle of the bay, when hopefully onto the sand, but also on the side of the reef. So just a quick flick, no spectacular. Boom, just like so. What you want to do is give a little bit of line, just like that. Take your drag, wait for the line to settle. And what I sometimes do, maybe today as well, we put the bells on the top, but we also will be keeping an eye. And then nice and neatly in the rod stand, we can watch the rods while we get the other one set up. I'll bring you back when we're getting the float rod set up. The other rod's gonna be exactly the same. Well, I'll give you a show of that one as well. And I hope you can bring some fish. Okay, so now I'm gonna try the other rod. I've got both on ragworm on that rod. This rod I'm gonna put with the two hooks, one ragworm and a slither of mackerel. So I'll show you how I do the slithers. So I cut down here and literally as if you're filleting the mackerel like that. Blunt knife. Thanks, Mum. Thanks, Mum. When you're watching this, this is your knife, so should we go mad? <laughs> anyway, to put this on the hook, all I'm simply doing is running through. Now, when you've got mackerel and it's been frozen, it always tends to be a bit soft and a bit yuck. So make sure you pierce it through the skin. It probably won't stay on the bait on the uh, hook very long. But anyway, that's it. And that might attract a bream as well as the uh, as well as the rockfish. The other one I'm going to go with the uh, with the old um, ragworm again. Right, I'm going to cast this next rod out. We're going to go. We've got one straight out at the moment. I think we're going to put the other one just to the right hand side. Sarah's going to stand there and it's going to whistle past her. No. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Boom. Beautiful. So that's the second rod out. So we've got one out, one to the right. And we'll wait for that to settle. Set a bit of drag. There we go. Lovely job. And then the, the final rod we're gonna be using today, if we can find a float stop, is the Pen Regiment 2. You'd have seen this in the last boat video, or maybe this one, and uh, covered in scales. So we're gonna put a float set up on this. Just chuck a float out with a bit of mackerel and see what's around. Okay, so we're gonna set this float rod up now. It's been a bit of a, um, bit of a, mo <sighs> bit of a problem on my part. Um, I've forgotten, hang on, I've forgotten the float stops. As I said on the way down here, that's a pain in the backside. Um, I haven't got any, so I'm gonna have to try and use some line. You can also use um, elastic bands and stuff like that, but I haven't got any of that either. So it is a bit of a nightmare. I'm gonna try my best, but I'll show you the setup I'm gonna use in. So I'm gonna tie this, I'm gonna tie a bit of line onto the uh, main line, 
and then I'll give you a run through of exactly how the setup goes. This is all again, once, it's independent on what you want to use. So, start with a bead. Again, personal preference, if you want to use one with collars, that's your choice. I go with a, I like these floats, Shakespeare one ounce floats. You can see it's pretty battered, it's been old. The reason I brought two colours is because I thought if Sarah's fishing with it, she can choose. Some people can't see the colours. We'll go with the orange one today. And you feed the float like so until it comes out the other end. Obviously, everyone knows it's the orange bit on the top. So you'll look like that. Just keeping an eye. Then go with another bead. Go for a yellow one this time. Like so. Uh, then we go and go for a one ounce ball weight. One of these. And they've got little holes in. Again, you can just feed them line straight through. Or not, because that one's closed up. <laughs> no, no, that one there, I reckon. That one looks better. There we go, straight through. And then we go down to a swivel. And one of these will do the trick. No bites yet on the bottom rods, but they've only been out a couple of minutes and it's still early on the tides. So down to a swivel, then down to your trace and down to your hook. And that's the, pretty much the float setup. Right, so that is the float setup. Everyone can see that bead, float, bead, weight. Should have put another bead there, forgot to. <laughs> and then down to a couple of feet and a little hook. We're gonna do exactly the same as we put on that bottom rod with that mackerel. It's in there. We've actually put a mackerel over there because um, the flipping wasps keep coming round. So uh, we're trying to give them a three bit- Three wasps, right? Three wasps around there. So we're trying to give them a bit of uh, a decoy and they can sit over there and do whatever they want, but not round us, because I hate them. Anyway, if I was fishing here, really trying to float fish, I would have brought some shervy down. That is the way to get garfish. I'm literally putting this out because it was in the van and we've got some mackerel, so it's really not going to be trying to do much. And your right line is moving. Which one? The right one. This one here? A mm. couple of bites. Is it because of the sea or is it bites? Uh, there might be a little bit. The tide is coming up. I'll keep an eye on it. We'll have a look. Now, we've got to set the depth on this. So where is that? Oh, it's here. So yeah, there you go. This is the depth here. So it's about six foot. Now for garfish, that's probably about perfect. And I'm just going to flip it in the middle of the bag. Like. So it's literally just going to sit there. Now you need to make sure that your float's standing up, which it is. If it's not standing up, it's because the float stop is um, messing around and it's if it's on its side, usually it's because your bait's on the bottom, but also don't be fooled because if you've got a float that's gone on its side, it can also mean that there's a garfish playing around with it and lifting up the, the weight, which causes obviously the float to on its side. So we'll leave that there and we'll see what happens. Right, so we're having a bit of a mare with this flipping float rod, honestly. Don't ever come without um, float stops and correct stuff like that because it's a pain in the backside. Um, anyway, good news is, just seen some long nose jumping around in the water. So uh, hopefully we can catch some of those for you in a second. Garbage. Right, so there's a garfish around this. I reckon I'm going to get him. You watch, the float's playing silly buggers. It's gone on its side. We're gonna strike in a sec as soon as I see him take that. You can tell they're messing around. I've got no Sherby, so I've really worked hard to get these around here. It's on a bit of mackerel. Will the float go down? Go on. It's playing. It's yeah, playing. it's playing. I was just saying to Sarah about this, what they do. You might see some acrobats jump out of the water. 
I can see there's a lot of swells going on around the float. <laughs> see it, sir? It's bobbing, yeah. They're having a nibble. I'm going to take a bit of slack up. He's gone. No, he's having a nibble. He's having a nibble. Fish on! Did you see him yeah, jump out? Yeah, we saw him jump. Beautiful. Fish on. Might do some acrobats and see if we can get him to jump. Him or her? Could be a her, could be a him, who knows? Mr. Garfish. We're not gonna blank today. He's lively. He is lively. Sarah's never seen one of these. Mm. No. So there you go. The garfish. Nice size garfish, fantastic. They got a nasty beak on them. You don't want to get pinched, it's a bit like a chainsaw. <laughs> there we go. I actually said to Sarah, I said, you know what, this is a good time to get some garfish down here, but obviously with the without the sherbet, it's a bit bit more difficult. And which was the rod that was least likely? I did say this rod, then I said, actually, there's no sherbet, so we might not. The ragworm should play ball. But unfortunately, we've had no bites on the ragworm, so, uh, yeah, Mr. Garfish, come to the rescue. We're gonna get this unhooked, we'll get him back. So there we go. Mr. Mr. Longnose, we're gonna get a release, so if Sarah wants to follow me down. Here we go. He's gonna be going back. Oh, oh, over the rocks. Over the rocks, and there he goes, back down. That's what we like. Check the scales out on this. Blue scales, they've actually got blue bones as well. Anyway, we're gonna rebait, we're gonna get some more. There you go, see? We're fishing in a, literally 15, 20 foot away from the, uh, from the rocks. There's not much, he's there, he's got it. Fish on. Sarah? Sarah's gonna reel this in. <laughs> Is he giving you a fight? Or are we hooked up? No, no. He's there. Oh, it's a bream. Well done. There you go. It wasn't a garfish, it was a bream. So there's another species for today. Bream on the mackerel. So bream on float. Your arm's not long enough. <laughs> there you go. If you hold that up. Sarah's first ever float caught fish. Well done. Okay, so we're coming to the end of the, of the session. Sarah wants to have a go, her first ever cast with a rod, so I thought I'd give her the float rod and uh, we're gonna get it on camera. So, you all set? I think so. How's it looking? Do I need to stand out the way? <laughs> I'll stand back here. You far away. Oh dear. It's not set right, mister. Yeah. You need to put the bail arm up. That's it. So go back, give it a bit more of a, a, a flick out. Yeah, yeah. There we go. First ever cast. If you reel in again, I'll show you another way you can do it. So it's all practice, guys. If, as of anything, the more you practice, the better you get. So if you... That's it. Set it to about wherever you're comfortable, a bit more I'd say. Longer. Uh, a bit, a bit shorter. That's it, right. Now, if you put the rod down the side of your body, so like you had it down behind your leg, if you put the uh, bail arm, that's it. Flick the arm up and then cast that again. But have it, this bit here, that's going around your, the back of you, have the rod around that side of you. Oh, like more upright. That's correct, yeah. Uh, well, e the other side it almost, yeah? That's it. Getting better. Okay, so it's casting again. Perfect, look at that for a cast. Nice. That's a good, hold it there. That's a good 30, 30 foot, 40 foot. Happy with that? Much better. 
There you go. Anyway, we thought this would be a great place to end the video. Take my cap off, be a bit respectful. Uh, obviously today the bottom rods didn't really perform very well. So uh, it's one of those things. I wasn't really expecting much on a nip tide. We brought the float rod down. We know that there's uh, garfish and stuff to be caught. We didn't have any of the uh, shervy, which is the main thing for garfish. And uh, we still managed to attract some in. We had the garfish, we had the Sarah had a black bream, and we had a couple of other bites. So I could have caught more, should we have had the shervy. While we were here, we saw that guy come in with his boat, little Merrion dinghy, and he uh, walked his way back up. So we're gonna be heading back up there. But before we do, do us a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, check out Instagram, Facebook, and you'll be uh, the first to get any notifications. Thanks for watching, it's Bailey Fishing. See you next time.